Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, I thought for fun, we would tear down one of these atomizer devices. You put these cartridges full of e-liquids in. Then this device uh, heats them up, atomizes them for your consumption. So, I thought that'd be something fun. Now, first of all, this one is uh, called the Snap Mini. It's a little bit unique. These... Um, cartridges here the 510 cartridges they're called have a uh, it's 5.1 millimeter threaded base they generally thread into your atomizer but in this case they thread into this little magnetic thing here and then that magnetically couples down there so this panel comes down like so it gives you access to the charging port, select what voltage you want to use. Then you can see there's a little plunger there. That This is the actual button that activates the device. I don't know how well you can see that. And uh, you press it five times to turn it on or off. Do a little blink like that. And now we're off. So, let's have a look and see what's inside of it. I think we're going to find a uh, battery, a LiPo battery, a flat pack LiPo battery, battery control circuit, some sort of heater control circuit. Then if you look down in there, there's going to be some sort of heating coil. Looks like it uses little tiny torque screws. Lucky for us, we have this fantastic iFixit toolkit here. We just need to find the right one. Look at that first shot. So we can disassemble. Now the oils used in these can be um, really thick, sticky, and get everywhere. So who knows what we're going to find inside one of these. I was wrong, it's a round battery, not a flat pack. Interesting. What else will we find when we look in here? Let me get that other screw out. All right, remove the screw. Hmm. Very interesting. So this looks like a cast metal, probably aluminum. Let's see if we can uh no, it's not gonna slide out. Okay, so this is a separate assembly. No. Nope. Give me a second. Alright. Looks like we might be getting somewhere now. Okay. Now we're talking. There we go. So what we have here is our cast case. There's our little button plunger thingy. Some other assorted bits. Let me get that all out of the way. And take a look at what we have here. So our button is under this piece of foam here. Then our LEDs are under this phone. Let's uh, zoom down. So the battery we've got here is a 13600 2.2 watt hour, 3.7 volt. I assume the 600 is the size here. Yeah. 
and that's probably 13. So here's the board. And of course our chips. Well, this chip is obliterated. This chip actually appears like it might have something on it. Can you guys read that? Man, that's hard to read. Okay, there is a picture I blew up of the chip, which looks to me like it says 7C10568. Could be 1058A. I searched both, and I can't find anything at all on them, so... Maybe I can get you a better picture here. That's definitely a 4. 7C4056A. I mean, that's what I thought it said anyway. So as we examine the circuit board, we've got our power coming in going through a diode, resistor, capacitor. Diode, I'm sure, is for uh, what's an LED. Yeah. Then we have this chip, which I'm just going to have to guess is some sort of a charge control chip. We have uh, one transistor here, Q1. Q2 is not populated. Then we have our voltage LEDs up top, D6543. Then we have this unmarked, which will be our microprocessor. And then we have another LED down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here is the output. Focus. There we go. And it feeds into our heater here. That goes there. This is our magnetic coupler that fits in there. You can see that really really does the job. That's a nice magnet. <laughs> it's stuck to my pliers. Let's see if we can get this apart and have a look at the uh, actual heater. So the heater part right here is recessed in there. Some sort of plunger spring. Tried to get in there and pry the edges apart, but not really much I can do. So all in all, I mean, that's it. This is a pretty simple little device. Yeah, I'm going to guess here. Battery control circuitry, charging monitor, you know, um, over discharge protection, all that. Then a microcontroller to control the uh, the on time. This thing does have quite a few functions. Let's see if I turn it on. Five, five button pops. There we go. So now it's on. If I simply hold the button, it heats up the coil. Sorry about that, I had a cough. Heats up the coil at whatever voltage is selected. And then I'm still holding the button. After 10 seconds, it should cut off. There we go. See, now it's in cutoff mode. It also has another function of preheat. If I hit the button twice, see this one up here, the indicator LED going through a number of colors. That's the 10 second preheat. And I don't feel any heat off this. It must be something to do with the coupling. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's see if I can reassemble it. Start by putting the, oh. try this again. Start by putting the magnetic button back in its hole. Oh, come on. There we 
There you go, fall in the hole. There we go. And now, I think, we should be able to slide this back in where it comes from. Trying to, there we go. Trying to find that little slot that it goes in there. And I didn't find it. <laughs> there we go. And that should go back in there. Like so. Then this piece somehow fits on here. Well, Paul, you big dummy, you put it in upside down. So that's going to be a problem. Perhaps it slides in from this end then. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's the way that goes in there. And yep. Now this has to somehow. Ah, oh, man. Right now, with the global shortage on components, it's more important than ever to know places where you can order the components, whether they be actives, passives, modules, whatever, for your projects. That's why I wanted to talk to you today about UT Source. For instance, if we come down here to passive components, you can see they have all kinds. Carbon film resistors, cement resistor, chassis mount, chip currents, and blah, blah, blah. Lots and lots and lots. Capacitors, crystals, inductors. IC chip 7400 series digital integrated circuits. You can take a look through here and see everything they have. Now, granted, some of these products are used, but in this case, in this great shortage that we're experiencing right now, hey, wherever you can get it, you can get it. So, check out UT Source. I'll put a link down below. Maybe they have what you need. If they do, give me a shot. Third time's a charm. Yeah. Third time's a charm. Get our screws in here. Let me make sure I get these wires all nice and <clears throat> tucked out of the way there. It's a surprisingly simple device. Two ICs, a bunch of passives, and a little heating coil. Nothing much to it, really. So this one retails for around $40. I don't remember exactly, $35 to $40, somewhere in there. Now let's make sure that it works. Yep, 
there's our turning on blink. There's our voltage light. All good. So, if you've ever wondered what's inside of one of these e-liquid vaporizer devices, now you know. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'd like to thank UT Source for sponsoring this video. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.